Well, hello there. Good morning, friends and foes. Good morning, multiverse. Welcome to Back to the Cereal Box, the pop culture podcast that celebrates the fun of the Saturdays of our youth while surviving adulthood today. This morning, we are starting a brand new series called Saturday Morning 101. And this morning, we're going to be eating Fruity Pebbles. We're going to be talking Flintstones comic books. And of course, the Flintstones cartoon series. And we've got a very special guest in the rec room. You do not want to miss this episode. And we are going to do that right after this very special message from the Murdering Crows. Roll that beautiful bean footage. It's like Coca-Cola, Levi's Strauss, Johnny Carson and Mickey Mouse. The first star was James Dean, Elvis Presley and he's still the king. Some things are only imitatable, you can't be that original. Yabba dabba do. Good morning, multiverse. This is Back to the Cereal Box, the pop culture podcast that celebrates the fun of the Saturdays of our youth while surviving adulthood today. And um, when I was a kid, I am of an age where Saturday mornings meant cartoons, comic books, kaiju, kung fu movies, and of course, a big bowl of cereal while you're uh, watching cartoons while you're sitting down in front of the tv and when i was a kid we didn't have iphones or tablets at the breakfast table on saturday mornings or any mornings for that matter so in between the cartoons comic books and kaiju we were reading the back of the cereal box that was our world that was our newspaper that was a portal to pop culture because they would print comics on the back of the cereal box they would have sometimes records you could cut out and listen to posters games last week we showed a game a a play set that you could build and that was my introduction to the pop culture that i love today so that's what this show is all about that's what celebrating the saturday experience of our youth means while surviving adulthood today we get to be big kids on Saturday morning, once again, if only for one hour. Now, before I bring in my co-hosts, we have to acknowledge our sponsors. Of course, that awesome theme song was performed by The Murdering Crows, and you can get their album, Four Bad Crows, at Amazon, Google, and Apple Music. And that theme song was also written by my best friend, Jamie Slocum, who tragically died in a car accident two weeks ago. And um, much love to you, Jamie. Mm, mm -mm. We also need to thank our super cereal box friends, our supporters, Eli Cash, Sharice Collins, Dave Manginelli, Dave Mattingly, Greg and Crystal Jones. And you too can have your name in lights at buymeacoffee.com slash cereal box pod. And I am so excited this morning because we're going to be talking about one of the most iconic cartoons of all history. In my opinion, it is an essential. And that's what we're going to be covering for the next several weeks. We're doing a new series called Saturday Morning 101. And well, to help us explain why we're doing this, Let me bring in my co-host of the last 11 years. She is a fan of Friends, Wizard of Oz, Jurassic Park, Ghostbusters. She has been my broadcast partner for 11 years. The original geek girl, model, actress, photographer extraordinaire, the one, the only, the incomparable, D. Barty. Hi. 
<laughs> and I look like at that. When you introduce me like that, it puts a big <clears throat> smile on my face. Well, Probably that's I don't have to do it. <laughs> that's that's my one true talent is is introducing people. Uh, now, DBRT has the awesome Flintstones backdrop in her studio. I love that. And D, you're you're kind of responsible for this new series, this new direction we're doing. I am. <clears throat> yes. Well, I hope it doesn't flop. <laughs> well, no, I think this is going to be awesome. So, one of the one of the things that Dee has always added to our broadcast is that, you know, she's not a super like super fan like I am. I'm like I'm the prophet of pop culture because I like this is my life, right? This is what I'm obsessed with, and Dee just you know she likes to have fun, and <laughs> she likes me. And that's and I come back and make snarky comments. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's and, and traditionally that's kind of been where where it ends. She serves the role of you, the audience, and can ask questions that you know someone who's new to comics and cartoons and pop culture would ask. And that's always been a phenomenal role because she makes me look really good. <laughs> um, but um, but so. We were we were at Chattacon, and D and I were sitting down and having this conversation about um, about the hate mail I've been getting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and it occurred to me, me, it made me so sad. Well, but but it occurred to me that in that role as as the observer, you know, I look here's here's where where the rubber hits the road. I've been trying to put. DBRT the square peg into a round hole, you know, getting her to eat breakfast cereal on Saturday mornings, watch cartoons. And you admitted on the air that you you don't like cartoons. And and you you admitted to me privately, I'm gonna spill some tea here. John. <laughs> that, that that you had you know, not the greatest childhood. So when we relive childhood memories, it, it's not exactly fun or happy for you. So here's what we're going to do, D. This is, this is, we are going to introduce you to the magic of Saturday morning. Instead of expecting you to already know and be invested, I'm, we're going to teach, you're going to be our, our pupil. I love that. Thank we're going you. To you, and we're going to make you want to go see the stuff or read the stuff. Well, let me explain something. It's not that I hate cartoons, okay? That's again, what you said on the air. I know, I know, but it's early morning, <laughs> and I don't ever like have my thoughts together this early because I'm still asleep. So it's not that I hate cartoons. I'm not anti-cartoon or anything. I just have five children. And I've had been forced to watch them for 22 years. So as an adult, I'm like, freaking cartoons again. Because I, I don't it. want to always watch cartoons. So anyway. Well, so so we're going to reintroduce D. Barty to like the essentials. And so we reached out to our Facebook groups and social media. And we said, if you had to make a list of the essential Saturday morning shows for someone to understand why I'm obsessed, what would you list? And there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of suggestions, but there were some common ones that were on everybody's list. And the Flintstones was one of them. So you know what's really funny. I tried to get my kids to watch the Flintstones because I, I remember watching them when I was young. I mean, I couldn't really tell you a whole lot about it, but I remember watching it. And like here recently, I tried to get my kids to watch it. And they're like, what is this? Because <laughs> See, see, this show is for them, too. All right. So <laughs> let's bring in our other co-host all the way from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. She is a fan of superheroes, comic books, in particular, the X-Men and loves all things X-Men. She is our emotional support Canadian, the Peppermint Princess, the social media socialite. It is Willow Skyler. 
Good, Good morning. morning, Willow. And she I is- love your backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you in the audience, she is coming to us live from the Flintstones front yard in front of the Flintstones uh, mailbox. And I love that. <laughs> love that. So, so Willow, did what I uh, explained at the top of the show about Saturday Morning 101 make sense? Absolutely. Uh, and D, uh, I, I, I sympathize with you of not having a very good childhood. That's the, that's it. That was the one thing about, uh, my childhood that I enjoyed was being able to escape the crap that I had to deal with, <laughs> uh, as a child, uh, living with my grandparents and being in foster care in general. Um, was being able to sit in front of the TV for a couple hours and just ignoring all the stuff behind me and just focusing on, you know, just having fun, being a child for the, that few moments that I was allowed to have I don't on know. Saturday I, mornings. For me, like, I don't know. It wasn't a big part of my, I, I mean, I didn't have a horrible childhood. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I wasn't. I wasn't abused, nothing like that. I didn't have a horrible childhood. I just, my mom had me very young and, you know, like 15. So I was, <laughs> I was very young when my mom teenager. had me too. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it is time to bring in a very special guest. I am, I am super excited because I, I met this gentleman through a Facebook group, um, that is focused on 80s and 90s cartoons. Fun. But he, yes. But he has also got an awesome YouTube channel. Um, and it is called J&J Toy Giants on YouTube. And this guy, man, he's a he his his toy hunt and unboxing videos are epic. If you're not following Big Sexy, Javier, J.D. Diaz, you really must. Here he is. Welcome him to the virtual rec room. Welcome, J.D. Hey, thank you for having me. I was wondering, I'm like, who is he talking to? (laughs) (laughs) Who is he talking about? I need to meet this guy. I I love your your show. Um, It's you and your son. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Uh, My son, Jaden, and I... um, started uh, our channel back in 2019 yeah it's it's phenomenal and look i i look at a couple of things when i'm looking at youtube channel successes um your your subscriber to view rate is like almost 100 percent. it's wow. unbelievable what you're doing um so i love that Love that. Well I done. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I spend many hours uh, trying to pro- make make our videos better, so to speak. Because I I I don't come from the uh, filmmaking world. Um, although, because of the channel, I've then decided to submit. You know what? Like, because I do everything. I do the filming. I do the editing and all that. I do the social media pr- uh, promotion. It really got me to like, well, what, what if, if I knew what I was doing, you know, and, and it actually <laughs> allowed me, it, it, it gave me the idea to go back to school. I'm actually currently in school right now for filmmaking and oh, uh, that's editing. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic. Nice. That's commitment, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's fantastic. That yeah. is so Everything you awesome. see on the channel, I pretty much self-taught myself how to do. So That's awesome. That's that. awesome. So, JD, um, you're, you're 10 years old. It's Saturday morning. What is drawing you to the living room or to the kitchen? What's on TV to get you up out of bed in the morning? And what's in that bowl of cereal at 10 years old? Uh, Well, at 10 years old, it would be depending. I would flip back and forth because my dad, um, he would wake up in the morning and he, 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 but without every single day, he does the same thing. He pops in it because my, my, Sister and I had to share a room at that time. We only had a one bedroom, bedroom apartment. My dad would sleep on the couch at that time. So he would pop in in our room and says, who wants to do a cereal run? And he'd have a 20 in his hand. So we would take Aww. turns. My sister and I walking, yes, walking in the Bronx. We used to, uh, used to live in the Bronx uh, to C-Town, 
which is, uh, I believe it became ShopRite. And it, uh, we would, okay, it's your weekend. You can choose whatever you want. No, it's my weekend. I can choose whatever we want. So if my sister went, it would be honeycombs. If I went, it would be a mixture of either sugar crisp syrup or um, uh, Apple Jacks. We love Apple Jacks. Yeah, I, do, Willow, I love fruity pepper that, too, uh, but that that was uh, <clears throat> that was kind of like a little pricey at that time, uh, if you can believe that back in the nineties. But my dad was like, it was, never changed it. it was. Never I, changed yes. it. He always had my Cheerios for my dad. Never changed it up at all. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so what's in the bowl today? That's what we have to ask. What's in the bowl? And since we are talking Flintstones. It was only right that we do Fruity Pebbles. Now, I've got the leftover Halloween Fruity Pebbles, and I was afraid that it might be stale when I opened it up this week. Does it but, ever get stale? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know okay, that it yeah. does, but I did a great job of sealing the inner bag, and it is fresh as a daisy, as, as uh, Val Kilmer would say, as uh, Doc Holliday. So... I'm going to pour some Halloween Fruity Pebbles. And what makes this different for Halloween? It, it, and I put too much because it's going to go soggy too fast. It's purple and orange. Um, tastes exactly the same, but it's purple and orange. And you remember the back of this cereal box had all of these great recipes for uh, to use the purple and orange Fruity Pebbles. Now, John, Willow, have, you, have you eaten these before? Have yes. you tried these? Yes, I love them. We we, okay. we did it. We did an actual cereal taste. I did a full episode. Okay, taste I just test. I can't remember. I just want to make sure because all I remember is ICCC con and you eating those. Oh, the magic fruity pebbles were awful. Is that what it was? The <laughs> yeah, yeah, they made me sick. Yeah, they made him so sick. Oh and no! Like, and like we're yeah, mm. I won't go into it, but mm. yeah, like, can you handle these, John? <laughs> Fruity Pebbles is so good. It is so good. Now I Javier, will agree. I love Fruity Pebbles. I love I really the bowl 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 bowl. I recall them having a more distinct taste, but when I went, bought them the other day and tried them out, it threw mm. me off because they tasted like Fruit Loops. They use the same. They use the same um, chemicals to be able to, as far as like the taste mm. is concerned. Well, two different companies though. Fruit yeah. Loops is Kellogg's. Fruity Pebbles is Post. And Post, let me tell you what. Post cereals are quality to begin with. I am coming to figure out that I like Post cereals. I, yeah. I, any cereal that I'm like, yeah, I kind of like that. It's been a Post cereal. Now, Willow, you had a funny story about <laughs> your Fruit Loops experience or your, your Fruity Pebbles experience. So tell the audience what happened when you opened the box. For some reason, my mind had thought that Fruity Pebbles was round little balls. Uh, I was completely thrown off at the fact that they were little tiny flakes. And honestly, it looks like someone had mushed up you know, Fruit Loops in my box, and I'm just like, this can't be real. This can't be the way that it that they were back in the '90s when I remember it, eating them as a child. Um, so yeah, I posted my video up on TikTok and uh, YouTube and all that just just to see if I can get reactions from from the rest of the crowd. But apparently, my mind apparently, according to everybody else, everybody says that yeah, they've always been flakes. So, yeah. Yeah, they've always been. <laughs> now, did you did you only get fruity pebbles or did you get some cocoa pebbles as well? I got I just got the fruity pebbles. I'll try the cocoa pebbles later on this week. You know what is the best are the cocoa pebbles rice crispy treats. If oh. you make rice crispy treats out of cocoa, oh my god. Oh, they're so good. I'll have to remember that. What? <laughs> and you didn't where, make any. <laughs> where, you didn't make any. Where are oh, they? I know. I'm so sorry. This week was coming <laughs> home at high school, and I've been there all week. Wait, coming home at high school? Don't they call that homecoming? No, what? it's coming home because it is basketball, not football. It's a big event for basketball. 
See, hmm. in my high school, there was homecoming for, they didn't call it different things, but. There was homecoming for football where we built the float and did the parade no. and everything. This is basketball. So we decorate the school and then they have a coming home dance, which is today. So I'll be there Interesting. today. Yeah. Anyway, and J that's JD, what I've been doing instead of cooking. <laughs> that's I love it. JD, and you've got your Fruity Pebbles. Would you agree with me that Fruity Pebbles is maybe one of the top five best cereals ever made? Yes. yes and oddly enough, Fruity Pebbles is actually the Thanos snap of Fruity, Fruit Loops. <laughs> oh. What does explain, that mean? Explain that for D. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that you watch uh, or that people will watch nowadays, the culmination of the first um, story that they've been, been telling through all the films from 2008 up until the last year or the year before that, uh, the, the main villain, Thanos, snaps everybody into nothingness. Basically, half of the population of that whole universe just, just disintegrated into like flakes. And so oh. anytime that people re regard or basically make the reference of it's a Thanos snap, that means that they're all disintegrated into flakes. And because fruit, Fruity Pebbles taste a lot like Fruit Loops, and I'm like, oh, the Thanos snap of Fruit Loops. I'm going to use that. <laughs> people will think I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so, so I think D just admitted on air without admitting it that you've not seen Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War. You know what? I might have. It just things just don't stick like that. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I can watch friends and it's you know useless information of friends, useless information of Ghostbusters, all up here. But like, yeah, I just watched Thor: Love and Thunder the other day for the first time. Love that movie. Oh, you. That's unfortunate. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Javier, we do not diss Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, no. And D, listen, for D to have watched it three times, you said the third time or the first no, time? The first time. Oh, I thought you said the third time. No. I was gonna I was gonna be even more excited. Did yeah. you like it? <laughs> I did. Okay. So Thor Love I and Thunder. See why why it got so much hate, but I mean I liked it, but I like cheesy stuff. So yeah. Well, <laughs> Thor Love and Thunder. I'm also is... an actor, so I get the I, I know what goes into it, so I have an appreciation for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And and Javier, here's how I described Thor Love and Thunder. In my review, I described Thor Love and Thunder as the fruity pebbles of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if you love Fruity Pebbles, you're going to love Thor Love and Fun Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, first day with my new tongue. So you know what? I'm going to have that put on a t-shirt in our merch store. First day with my new tongue. Because you say it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a demand for it. Now, Willow, what is your, yes, what is your verdict on Fruity Pebbles? You I like had it. them in so long that you thought that they were little round pebbles, <laughs> but now you've had the real thing and, and refreshed your memory. Give they are good. Us. I okay. I I love the color uh, of them. Like the, it, I'm actually surprised that they don't turn your milk different colors, but um, the chocolate ones do. <laughs> yeah. But no, I I and it. it Kind of looks like stained glass uh, in mm. in your bowl. It's really pretty. So that's a good analogy. And these are fruity pebble crisps. Mm. So you hadn't remembered them being flat flakes. Well, this they made them even flatter <laughs> because they compressed them into chips. Chips. <laughs> Chips made of fruity pebbles. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. This now, the first time I've tried gluten free. Well, they've pebbles. always been gluten free. Yeah. Because they're they're rice. They're they're not grain. They're rice based. Well, rice so, is a grain. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Glu but gluten is only in wheat grain. Right. But so, rice is a grain. Well. But you know what I'm talking about. Stop <laughs> correcting me, D. <D>. Barty. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, sir. So, for your movie, movie nights, Fruity Pebbles Crisps. I got to try that. They're pretty good. They're not as good as the cereal. 
I like but, the cereal bars, the Fruity Pebble cereal bars. I really like those. So here's my thing with cereal bars, is whatever they use to imitate milk. Yeah, it's weird. It's I don't, I don't like it. But I don't like milk, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with the cereal bars. Now, JD, hold up the back of your box. I'm gonna bring you up full screen. So, oh. What, what, so is, are you making your own captions for the pictures? Is that what's going on there? Yeah, basically they let you uh, write your own little comic strip on here. They, cool. they have some, some words in here, like the first one, Dino, the famous Snortosaurus, uh, which I didn't even know until now that that was his actual species, Snortosaurus. I, I always thought of him as a brontosaurus. Um has zero time for interviews or selfies because, and then it's blank. I love this activity. I love the back of this cereal box. Yeah, it could help uh, you know young kids learn how to be creative in writing. Yeah, and and not rely on jet, chat GTP. God. Anyway, so God, Alexa, what does he mean? <laughs> mm. Alexa, what what does that mean? What is he doing? <laughs> oh, you just, you just. Turn my Alexa on. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So okay, I'm going to send bad vibes to Alexa because you didn't bring a plastic spoon this morning. You're driving me insane. Well, but I brought a plastic uh, bowl. It, it doesn't matter. You're still. No, yeah. it it's still the same sound. It's Don't just reversed. No. I know. It's, it's just instead of a glass spoon or a glass bowl and a plastic spoon, it's a plastic bowl. And a metal spoon. You're still that, tapping it. It's still a loud tap. Just as our audience. I, I have it right here it. at the mic. For all of those just listening, <laughs> you're welcome. That is the There's bowl. always that one person that when you say that you don't like something, that they, they, they're they impulsed to do it. You're welcome. <laughs> jerks of the world, yeah. <laughs> I.e. John Pica. <laughs> Oh my God, Dee just <laughs> must have lost her internet connection. What just happened oh, no. to Dee? I'm oh, sorry. No. Oh no. Oh no. Well, oh, well, she's back. Anyway, we've got some viewer comments. It's time for viewer comments. And Dave Mattingly chimed in before we even went live with Flintstones, the modern Stone Age post apocalyptic family. Javier, we're going to talk more about this in a minute, but I have a theory that the Flintstones are not Stone Age. They are post-apocalyptic, that they are the post-apocalyptic future of the Jetsons. We're going to talk more about that in a minute, so, so put a pin in that. Uh, Carlin Stewart joins us and says, morning. He had, am uh, not amnesia, insomnia. You know, that would be horrible to have amnesia <laughs> and insomnia at the same time. You're up all night wondering who you really are. Anyway, uh, welcome, Carlin. <laughs> <laughs> Molly Daniels is with us. She says, good morning. And Drew Milden, speaking of memories of the Bronx, uh, Javier, Drew Milden is with us. He says, good morning. All good right. Morning. So we're going to we're going to save some of these comments for uh, a little bit later but Dave Mattingly says D is getting homework. She's I getting... always have homework. I just don't do it. It's it's <laughs> See, the the purpose of this new series is to encourage her to do the homework. <laughs> yeah, cuz we I love the last name Mattingly something. by the way. <clears throat> What? Mattingly is my uh, is the na last name of my favorite baseball player. Oh, uh, okay. Mattingly. Yeah. Played for the and Yankees. He also played for the Dodgers. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. See, see, Dave, I'm 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 a rebel. I guess I don't respect authority. And when John tells me to do something, I'm like, mm. yeah. My father <laughs> would probably tell you, yeah, I, I was the same way. <laughs> so, Dave Mattingly gives us another comment that is a perfect segue. He says, the Flintstones comic from a few years ago was full of fantastic dark satire. And it just so happens, Dave Mattingly, that I have 
in the box. I'm going to reach in and pull out the prize this morning. This this is going to qualify, ladies and gentlemen, as our official <laughs> new loot section. I'm going to reach in and I'm going to pull out the trade paperback of the DC's Hanna Barbera Flintstones. What wow. in the world is that? So here's what they did. A few years ago, they republished, uh, well, they published a line of Flintstones comics and they published them in a hyper realistic style. So, um, it, uh, and, and, you know, these, these people are, you know, there's actual Neanderthal cavemen and then there are the more, uh, sophisticated, but let, let me tell you what, they got what? Wilma and Betty, right? Mm -hmm. Because they were. They were good looking. I'm just Dang. saying. John Goodman got some guns in that comic book. <laughs> yeah. And and um and and here we have the uh you remember uh Gazoo, the great Gazoo. Here's his race of aliens invading. And you know, this this is a uh this is a strange book because it dances around that concept that I you know have theorized that the Flintstones are post apocalyptic. They're actually far, far future. And that's why there are aliens. Um, but uh, turns out that's not exactly what the writers were going for. But they, they kind of danced around with the idea. And um, it's, it's I mean, it's a fun series. It's, and, and I'm going to tell you guys right now that, like, Ryan Permissen is watching and he's going, where can I get that? That's a good question, Ryan. I'm glad you asked. I found a website this week that is phenomenal called In Stock Trades. In Stock Trades has trade paperbacks, 45,000 trade paperbacks and graphic novels in stock today to order. And they're at huge discounts, 40 to 60% off retail price. Um, they're not a sponsor yet, but they... <laughs> are phenomenal i nudge I, nudge I, yeah i discovered them this week and i want everyone if you are into back issues and you want to get trade paperbacks check out instocktrades.com now before we leave today i'm gonna to have javier i'm gonna have you show off some toys from your channel but i i want to keep us on track with the flintstones this morning so um let's see uh a couple more comments um wow we've got so many comments this morning um oh this is this is fun andrew milden says my wife has watched a flintstones christmas for the past 25 years what what are the flintstones celebrating at christmas exactly if they're prehistoric anyway um <laughs> Apparently, the uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, back in the Stone Age as well. It could be. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Um, golly, there's so many comments. So we're going to go through these as we, we talk about uh, the Flintstones. So what's on the tube? Well, I think we've answered that. It is yeah. the Flintstones and... Um, I see that we still have a comment on the screen, and we're going to hide that. All right. The Flintstones, Fred, Barney, Wilma, Betty, Pebbles, Bam Bam, and Dino. And you guys, we took a deep dive this week. When I, The more homework I sent out, the more I discovered. So, <laughs> uh, As did I. I mean, I, I've got the Wikipedia page in front of me, and Wikipedia says The Flintstones is an American um, animated sitcom produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions. The series takes place in a romanticized Stone Age setting and follows the activities of the titular family, the Flintstones, and their next-door neighbor, the Rubbles. And it was originally broadcast on ABC from September 30th, 1960, to April 1966. And Will is going to fill us in on an amazing fact about the origins of the Flintstones. So, Willow, <laughs> your assignment this week was 10 things you didn't know about the Flintstones. 
And D, I can't wait to see your reaction to some of these. Yeah, I was kind of floored. Like I'm reading everybody's assignments and I'm like, where's mine? And I'm like, okay, I, I can handle this. Your assignment you just is need to, to sit there and look pretty. Is to react. You're, you're yes. about to go to school. <laughs> Getting schooled. All right. Let me All right. Get. Take it away, Willow. All right. So number 10, the vitamins aren't as healthy as parents once thought. Oh, yeah, I can't <laughs> the believe that. <laughs> the yeah, that have already pebbles and cocoa pebbles. Oh, no, if wait, you grew wait, up wait. in the 90s. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. As an adult, the vitamins are disgusting. <laughs> now, I don't know if they've changed them or what. But, like, I even tried to get them for my kids. And they're wait. like, ew. Wait, do they still exist? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're in gummy form only. They don't they're not the same that they were before. You can still get them in chalky form. I can't or I think chalky. <laughs> not the tablets. Form. The, yeah. the chewable tablets. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I can't remember where they're at though. Because it's been a while since I tried to well, buy them. You but. live in Fairview, so there's only two choices. I go outside of Fairview quite often, John. <laughs> yeah, she's not trapped in a right hexagon in Westview. <laughs> It's right, just so, as close for me to go up the interstate as it is to go into town. So, there so, you go. so, so, no, so, Flintstones vitamins weren't good for you, Willow. No, uh, according to Spoon University report that the Flintstones vitamins contain sorbitol, <clears throat> a laxative agent that can cause nausea, cramps, and diarrhea if someone consumes a high quantity. The vitamins also have a type of food coloring that could lead to ADHD. Oh my with, God. <laughs> with this in mind, the vitamins include vitamin A, C, D, and E, but they also contain chemicals and additives that aren't the healthiest. Well, that's why our entire generation was on Ritalin, <clears throat> because we all took the Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> you guys remember the theme song? We are Flintstones kids, 10, 000, 10 million strong and growing. <laughs> And also being too uncontrolled. They that's were awesome. in cahoots with Squirrel. The Adderall people. <laughs> or Ritalin. So, it was Ritalin then. So that's number 10. What's number nine, Willow? Number nine. The Flintstones advertise Winston cigarettes. That is correct. And mm. I've got an image here on the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fred and what Barney would smoke cigarettes and promote Winston as Winstone's cigarettes. They were the official spokespeople. So why is Fred like, hey, I'm cool smoking a cigarette, and Barney's <laughs> like, look at my cigarette. <laughs> it's like, yes, darling, tell me about your damn. <laughs> you Fred, don't you want to be cool like me? <laughs> What's it next, Willow? Oh, sorry. Uh, the Flistos covered deep and dark topics such as suicide and infertility. Yes. So, so explain that more. All right. Uh, hopefully subjects such as these went over children's heads. However, they probably st uh, stuck with many parents. At some point in the series, viewers found out that Betty Rubble, the next door neighbor and best friend of Wilma Flintstone, could not biologically have children. Infertility is a topic that you often don't see on television during those times. In the episode, This Is Your Lifesaver, Barney Rubble, Fred Flintstone, and... Uh, Barney Rubble, Fred Flintstone's neighbor and best friend, finds out that he may lose the adoption rights of his son, Bam Bam. Fred has to stop him from jumping over the bridge. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. They gave me chills. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So Bam Bam was adopted, and there was an episode where, yeah, the, the social services came to take him away. It was it was pretty heavy. And wow. even as a kid, I remember like not being traumatized, but being like uh, shocked by that. What's next, Willow? CNN anchor Anderson Cooper called out the Flintstones. Oh, yes, I remember this. CNN anchor Anderson Cooper took offense to a few of the theme song lyrics. The lyrics go, you'll have a gay old time. Anderson, who is openly gay, questioned that the lyrics were trying to say that say about the homosexual lifestyle stating that the words were insulting and that his lifestyle is for neanderthals and cavemen and that it is it, that it's damaging to oh, those I struggling know. with their sexuality give me a break okay what, what year did that come out we don't what know that it? what gay used to mean in that time though right yeah i was yeah. gonna say what year did that come out or that, that it was the it was 66 yeah 
or uh, no, 60, yeah, 64, what 66. Yeah, 2018. <laughs> when Anderson Cooper made that statement, did, does it yeah, say it when like, that it, was? It couldn't have been in the 60s because people were really didn't. Well, he wasn't, wasn't alive any... then. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, uh, why are we? Yeah, a spokesperson for Warner Brothers Animation confirmed that the phrasing merely meant that the viewers would have a swell time watching the show antics. Yeah, it used to be have a gay old time, have a fun time. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, are are people mad at the at the phrase of a Christmas song that says uh, "Put on your gay apparel"? Yes, I was thinking the same thing, but you know, whatever. All um, right. What's the next? What's the next fact <laughs> that we didn't know about the Flintstones? About. Uh, the Flintstones came it came out with two live action movies. Which <clears throat> the second sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching the first one. I liked it. In nineteen ninety five, live action <laughs> movies apparently. Based it was off okay. Parking. It I was liked- okay. It, it could have been better, but yeah, at least they were kind of trying to be somewhat. Uh, it, it was it was close to it to the cartoon in a way, but yeah, I would have chose different actors. But well, now they they cast the the role that Halle Berry played perfectly. Oh because yeah, because I've I've watched the scenes with Halle Berry over. And over, <laughs> over again, I I couldn't figure anybody else to play Fred Flintstone than John Goodman. I thought that was like he was perfect. Yeah, uh, if if he were still alive, John Belushi. But yeah, John Goodman was was perfect for the for the time. Now, did you know? I'm sure this is in the article that the the Flintstones movie she appeared in was Elizabeth Taylor's final film. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, she played, uh, I think, Fred's mother. Yes, and yes. It was it was her final film role. Oh wow! Yeah. Huh. What, what's what's next, Willow? Seth MacFarlane wanted to reboot the Flintstones. Of course he did. That would have been epic. He chose the Orville instead. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know things. <clears throat> Well, and didn't he actually do a uh, he, he an did. episode of uh, Family Guy casting Peter as Fred Flintstone? I I don't remember that, but I, th- I know that I know he would do a lot of cutscenes. Uh, they would they would make fun of the Flintstones quite often. Yeah. All right. Interesting. What's next? <clears throat> Fred and Wilma were the first opposite sex animated couple to share a bed. Yes. Well, not just the first animated couple. They were the first couple on TV, period. That had never, they there had never been a married couple to share the same bed on TV until Fred and Wilma. E- yeah, even, and I, yeah, go ahead, JD. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt. Um, at that time, they, they, the show was on primetime. It wasn't on Saturday mornings or anything like that, so... It wasn't until I think the second season that they started putting it early for for kids. Yeah, and I think that's one of the uh, facts that uh, is on Willow's list. Mm-hmm. So how did that look? Does anybody know? What do you I mean, mean how did that look? I mean, was it just like blown past? Like, we're going to bed for the night and they both just like get in the same bed or did they like make a big deal about it? Like, Well, they didn't make a big deal about it, but they didn't blow past it either. It was just, this is what married people, this is how married people live. You know, up to that point, like the Honeymooners, um, I Love Lucy, the Dick Van Dyke Show, all of them had separate beds, the the couples. Mm -hmm. And so it was a little bit of a scandal in the 60s for them to show a married couple sharing a bed on an animated primetime television show. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. I just I want to talk to somebody and and I want to know like why that was a thing because it suggests they had sex. Well, I mean, <laughs> they know how kids get here, right? Well, <laughs> speaking of which, well, didn't they, they, uh, they touch on that with uh, I Love Lucy though? Yeah, so I Love Lucy. This this is I, I don't know if this is on your list, Willow, or not, but a um, little bit of TV trivia. So. I Love Lucy and the Flintstones were running concurrently. 
And because with animation, you have to do the production so far in advance, um, Wilma was slated to be the first television character, the first character on television to be shown as pregnant. But Lucy, I love Lucy, Lucille Ball, beat the Flintstones to the punch, um, and Lucy became the first woman on television to be shown as wasn't visibly she, pregnant. Wasn't she actually pregnant? And yes. That's why, yeah. 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 I just watched a little clip of that a few days ago. And she refused. I love, I love Lucy. She actually refused to uh, do the whole trope of hiding behind things to hide mm -hmm. her pregnancy. Yeah. And, and they went on. Um, uh, Lucy's uh, little Ricky and Pebbles Flintstone were born in the same time frame. So you had two babies being born on TV on two separate networks at the same time. And and it was it was revolutionary for television. Yeah, because her character debuted on, on February the 22nd of 1963. So yep. Okay, what next, else we so got? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Number three, the Flintstones may not have been a Stone Age family. The Flintstone uh -huh. family could have been a Native American family, or Flintstones could have navigated their way through the Roman Empire. William Hanna and Joseph Barbera also thought about setting the cartoon in the 1600s and making his beloved family pilgrims. The duo even thought about naming the Flintstone family the Bedrock Hillbilly, the Hillbillies. They considered so many unique options, but it's hard to imagine the Flintstones not being well, the Flintstones. Well, I believe <laughs> that that idea is what spawned the Jetsons. Because the Jetsons is basically the Flintstones in a post-apocalyptic future, right? And, and sci science fiction Flintstones. And in this image, they had a crossover where the Flintstones met the Jetsons. And, you, you know, there's debate. And I believe that the Jetsons didn't go back in time. I think the Flintstones went back in time. Because I think the Flintstones is the far future of the Jetsons where, reality. Where is the nose of Mama Jetson? Where is her nose? Oh, it's missing yeah, that from was, that uh, frame. Yeah, that was one of those uh, <laughs> designer uh, issues where like, uh, and it, it happens all through animation where it's like somebody forgot to draw a nose or uh, uh, a, the end of the head or something like that. And they animated it because they had to get it done by a certain time. And it, you, if you pause something... They, that happened with the Ninja Turtles too, where Donatello is talking, um, but you see Raphael's face, or Donatello is looking at something, but you don't see the top of his head. You just see the bandana, and then nothing. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Interesting. All right, Willow. What else we got? What's number All right. two? <clears throat> the Flintstones met the Jetsons, as ah. we just said. Yep. While the Jetson ha Jetsons had the same cartoon formula as the Flintstones with the laugh track and all, the only difference is that this, this cartoon setting took place in futuristic setting. The show came out in 1962, but the pre prehistoric family and the futuristic family didn't meet each other until 1987 in a time travel experiment gone wrong in a two-hour special called The Jetsons Beat the Flintstones. Ta-da! And what is the number one fact that fans did not know about the Flintstones? You've already stated it. Elizabeth Taylor made her last film appearance in the Flintstone movie. Ta-da! Ta-da! I now, have another fact that I wanted to share with you guys, uh, but you guys can talk about that real yeah, quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What is it? All right. So I'm not sure because <clears throat> you touched on um, or spoke of the Honeymooners. A lot of... Uh, people don't really didn't connect that they, the the Flintstones were kind of making fun or basically uh, tipping their hat to the Honeymooners because... Yeah, inspired by the Honeymooners, yep. Inspired by the Honeymooners and the Fred Flintstone was supposed to beat Jackie Gleason and Jackie Gleason at the time didn't think that that was cool. Um, I actually wrote it down here. Um, he almost sued them in because um, even though the Honeymooners only had one season and they would just repeat the, you know, in syndication... The model of Fred Flintstone basically even sounded a little bit like Jackie Gleason, and he almost sued them. But well, then it wasn't until people, when the show was going on, that so many kids were like liking the show. He didn't want to be the guy to say, "Well, I'm going to take your, your dreams away, kid." You know. 
Well, that that's funny because Jackie Gleason was actually consider he was considered for the role. They tried to hire him to play Fred because he was based off of him. And, you know, for whatever reason, he, he turned him down, which is funny because the Flintstones has lasted generations while the while the Honeymooners is considered iconic and revolutionary. And it's a piece of TV history. Like you said, they only did one season and um, there weren't spinoff series. And, and um, you know, the, the Honeymooners didn't get their own breakfast cereal. <laughs> So well, he, also too, even Barney and and um, what was uh, perhaps uh, friends na uh, name in, in the Honeymooners? I forget. But they sounded I, just like each other. You know, oh, the, Ed Norton. Uh, uh, it was. It Ed. was. Yeah. Norton. Yeah. So basically, Norton. Uh, Norton. He, they 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 both sounded like each other. Barney and Norton. Uh, and, what do you want, uh, Fred? Fred and Ralph. You know. So like it was like I that, I caught that like I was like wait a minute is this supposed to be like the cartoon of Honeymooners like yes. Yeah, it but, was. It was. And D, have you ever seen The Honeymooners? No. That's okay. Uh, it only ran one season, but you should go check it out because. Oh, Jackie is it not Gleason, a movie? No, it's a television series. Oh. Um, yeah. one of the first, uh, one of the first episodic television shows on TV. That's why it's, and and it's so well written, so well acted. Jackie Gleason, um, is phenomenal. You've heard that phrase. One of these days, bam, zoom to the moon. I used to do that. My yeah. dad used to do that. <laughs> uh, it's, it sounds horrible now, but it's like you know, he would say, when I would One say of these something days, funny, Alice. Or, say, <laughs> to say, the Bobby. moon. <laughs> zoom. Yeah. So that's a great segue, Javier, because I gave you a segment to share the funniest quotes from the Flintstones. Uh, I actually found a couple. Uh, the my favorite one. Uh, there was uh, a scene where uh, Fred is wants to buy uh, Wilma a gift. I don't. I don't think it was for like their anniversary or something like that. But he goes to a shop and he sees a bunch of purses, and he sees an alligator purse, and he goes, ah, "Which? Uh, it's like I wonder if they're made of real alligator." And then the alligator turns out to be, "Oh, really funny. What do I look like? A giraffe?" <laughs> like the, the the purse spoke to him. I'm like, what do you think I look like? A giraffe? <laughs> wow. The other one uh was uh uh Fred says, how Fred says to Barney, How can you be so stupid? And Barney was like, Hey, that's not very nice. Say you're sorry. And he goes, I'm sorry you're stupid. <laughs> I love that. I love I that. always loved Barney. <laughs> I <laughs> I, used to I guess I like Barney was the first one that I learned how to do. I've always liked socially awkward men. I guess I don't know. <laughs> socially awkward men. Never that heard that explains why she's Barney on this show. Today. Yeah. <laughs> and some of us learned how to spell because of the Flintstones and his shows. <laughs> There was always like you know, whenever Fred or, or even Barney would try to spell something out, it was always something. It was it, the word was always wrongly spelled. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, there were so many great quotes. So, uh, like Fred saying to Barney, "Who's your bosom buddy, close friend, and lifelong pal?" And Barney says, "How many guesses do I get?" <laughs> um. He was the funny man too. Funny and socially yeah. awkward. Yeah, I I love it. And and <clears throat> this is classic neighbors stuff, right? Fred says, "Don't you see our neighbor Alvin Brickrock? He borrowed my shovel. He could be a vicious monster, a diabolical fiend." And Barney says, "Well, Fred, you haven't returned my lawnmower, and I don't feel that way about you." <laughs> Didn't they have like an actual like animal that ate the lawn for their lawnmower? Yes, that was their that was the gimmick. Like all of their appliances, like the uh, the garbage disposal was just a, a animal under the sink, just eating yep. all of the stuff they would just wash down. And um, you know everything was like uh, animal or di dinosaur based or something like that. Even the 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 horn when they have to clock out. Uh, they would yeah. just pull on the on the bird's tail and it would scream. 
John, and just that last point. comment, Barney had a kind heart. I yes. agree. That was Chris, <clears throat> yes. Chris Walker says Barney had a kind heart. And for those of you uh, watching, I am uh, posting comments. We we can't address every single one, but uh, um, we we we're we're gonna post them as we go. And and Chris is right. Barney did have a very tender heart, and you know he was always considered the dumb one of the d duo. But Barney was actually an inventor. Did you guys remember this? Did you hear that? That's why I didn't call him dumb because he was just socially awkward. He wasn't dumb. So you got smart, socially awkward, kind-hearted, you know, all the things that I love. <laughs> yeah. He was, the, I, I, he was the Sheldon Cooper of cartoons. Oh, that's funny. My favorite episode of the nerdy. Flintstones. <laughs> My favorite episode of the Flintstones is when Barney built, built the uh, pedal-powered helicopter. Do you remember this? I and, know. Uh, I yeah. Remember it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Fred was a little bit too heavy. For the pedal powered helicopter. It was it was a whole thing. Uh and and Fred said to Barney, You've just got to put a little weight behind it. And Barney said, Well, you're a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I loved about the Flintstones, and, and this was in later seasons, is was the celebrity guest appearances. Now, some of these you may not recognize right off the bat, but we've got the Beatles. We've got Samantha and Darren. As a matter of fact, here's a close-up of Samantha and Darren from Bewitched. Bewitched. And they, they played their actual characters. It was actually Samantha and Darren. And, um, you know, you had uh, uh, Alfred Hitchcock and Ed Sullivan, Hoagie Carmichael, and maybe one of the ones that as a, a young boy, oh, and Orson Welles is in there. Uh, the monkeys, or not the uh, monkeys, um, Herman's Hermits. Uh, and as a young kid, my jaw dropped for Anne Margaret. Hmm. Yabba dabba doo. <laughs> <laughs> now, like like a lot of uh, other shows like you know, Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes, and Scooby-Doo, the Flintstones spawned a huge industry of spinoffs. We, we mentioned the, the vitamins, the breakfast cereals, but Saturday morning, you know, I, I don't think we mentioned this, but the, the original Flintstones was not a Saturday morning show. It was a primetime evening show. Um, and it wasn't until later that it would be re-aired on Saturday mornings but in the 80s is when we saw the Flintstone comedy show. And it was some new episodes, some repackaged episodes. But then we had this string of Fred and Barney comedy hour. And there was a show called Fred and Barney Meet the Shmoo. And the Shmoo was a shape-changing, like, just... It's the sparrow. It's just this weird creature that nobody really understood. But he could change shape. And why Fred and Barney were with the shmoo, nobody knows. Um, and then Fred and Barney meet the thing. Wow. Zany Flintstone fun and teenage thrills with the biggest superhero of them all. Um, here's the funny thing. They never actually met. This was an hour-long program, and I remember this fondly. And the first 30 minutes would be the Fred and Barney comedy show, and then the second half hour would be The Thing. And they just packaged them together as, a, as one time block. Um, and the only time they actually met was in the credits, in the opening credits huh. of the show. But, yeah. And someone asked earlier... You know, and this is why the, we have a thing called uh, making sure that nobody false advertises. <laughs> well, that's right. Because speaking <laughs> of which, there was a question here about the cat. So do you guys remember in the um, in the the closing segments of the show, Fred would put the cat out for the night and the door closed behind them and the cat jumped through the window yep. and. Fred was locked Lock out. Wilma! <laughs> Do you know that that cat never 
appeared once in the series. I think I they. Know. I did remember I, that. Yeah. I think they mentioned the cat like once throughout the whole series, and that is about it. Like they, it's like just like a passing, like they had them walking from one room to the next, and he just happens to be like sitting in his sleeping in a corner or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And Molly Daniels, she says, I remember the schmoo. And Dave Mattingly says, ring thing, do your thing. That's how Benji <laughs> Grimm became the thing. And all these rocks. would, and uh, But they never met. Now, Drew Milden, you're getting ahead of us, Drew. Um, there were several spinoffs, including the Pebbles and Bam Bam show. Um, they were teenagers, grown up. And if you guys remember, Bam Bam had super strength as a baby. And that was a big part of the Flintstone show. But in this uh, this series, he really didn't. It, it wasn't gone. He just never used it. Um, there were only a couple of times that he demonstrated extraordinary strength. But it was really about the relationship with Pebbles, Bam Bam, and the rest of the gang. And basically, this was prehistoric Scooby-Doo without the dog because, and I don't think I have a picture of the whole gang. Maybe I do. Uh, and Pebbles and Bam Bam became more popular as a comic book series than a Saturday morning series. But um, does anybody remember Pebbles and Bam Bam? Yeah. Yeah, I did. But um, more so uh, during my era um, was the Flintstone Kids, which uh, came out in 87. So just for D, because she's got to run, Flintstone Kids. This Aww. is the Flintstones Kids on stage with Michael Jackson as Andrew Milden was getting ahead of us and said, Look Michael at little Jackson baby Pino. was on the Flintstones Kids. Yes, he was. Which makes no sense that they have the little puppy Dino because <laughs> in the Flintstones, Dino was not introduced until several episodes in he was adopted by the Flintstones. Um, and they had a hard time with Dino getting him housebroken and adjusted to <laughs> domestic life. Um, cause he and Fred did not get along initially, but, um, anyway, so, and of course the toys, this is on shelves right now. Flintstones what? pops with the house. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And you know who has it? Our sponsor, <clears throat> Entertainment Earth. Go to Entertainment Earth, click the link in our bio, in our show notes, and you can get a Flintstone pop. So, D, I'm going to let you run, but tell okay. everyone where they can find you. Oh, D Barty Photo on all the platforms. I'm there. You're awesome. And have we changed your mind? Are you ready to go try, give Flintstones a try again? Y yeah. I, I love the Flintstones. You, you, you just got to force your kids to watch it with you a couple of times. They'll yeah. fall in love with it, too. The yeah. animation. Yeah, older kids flawless. like it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the younger kids and the animation. That's the whole thing with them. They're so used to, you the know. The computer-generated animation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I watched the new Muppet Babies. I know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, it was uh I, not I was a fan. watching that with my with my daughter and I'm like, "What is this?" Like, not a fan. It's all computer like it. generated. It's uh, uh, uh We'll talk about that on another episode. But <laughs> D, I have thank to go you. Decorate so a dance. All right. Mwah. Bye. Love you mean it. Bye. Lovely to meet you. So, uh so Willow did we yes, learn sir. any? Did we learn anything this morning about the Flintstones that we didn't know Lots. prior? Lots. Is there is there any rabbit hole that you're like now? I got to go check this out. Uh, I'm gonna have to track down the McDonald's toys again. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't even have I... pictures of those. And one of my favorite toys as a kid came from the cereal box for Fruity Pebbles, oh. and um, it was a it was actually a Fred Flintstone coin holder a oh. coin purse you squeeze okay. his head and it opened up in the back and you could put your your coins i carried that with me for maybe 10 years huh. yeah i don't know whatever happened to it i'd love to track it down 
I remember getting like the, the the car that you just like streak across your table, and it was it actually went a pretty far away. Um, those things were cool, and then of course like the wind up toys that they came out with. Um, they had like kind of like around the time where uh, Mighty Max and uh, Polly Pocket came around, uh, they had the Flintstones uh, house with the that would open up and uh, yeah lots yeah. of toys that came out around <laughs> for uh, for that so james scott at across the pond sports network says we got flintstones kids it was awesome james surely that's not the only flintstones you had if <laughs> listen if you've never watched the original flintstones you can find it on streaming services but i'm going to recommend you do this go to your local walmart and they have the complete series on DVD for thirty nine ninety five. The complete wow. series. Grab it on DVD. That way you own the hard media. You can never. It's a lossless format. You're never going to lose it. And um, sit down and uh, start making the Flintstones part of your your uh, regularly scheduled viewing. Uh, Experience now they still air Flintstones on Me TV. So if you have uh, over the air antenna TV, Me TV um, still airs the Flintstones 6 p.m. on weekdays. Ta da! I'm sure you can go on YouTube too and get and watch some of the. I mean, it'll be out of order, but oh, yeah, YouTube and, yeah. and um, Boomerang, they, they all have them, but uh, I mean, if you want to watch them in sequential order. At your own pace, go buy the physical media. I'm I'm a big believer, JD, in owning the physical media. Physical media, yeah. I actually I, I have quite a bit of a collection DVD wise. Um, <clears throat> my favorite uh, that I have that's like I'll never get rid of, regardless. So I have the they came in uh, different volumes and tin cans. It was the Voltron. Each each season had different uh, lion's face as a tin. Right. Yeah, we DVD. have those. I, I have the the Voltron series, and also, I know it's a it's a rip off of like VHS, but I have the entire series of Bionic Six. Oh wow! Oh, okay. okay, that's awesome. You can't well, get it. They never they never released it in fit like DVD. I think they only had it in VHSs. Um, and so the the stuff that I have, you can tell it was ripped off of a VHS tape. Oh, oh, oh! I see what you're saying. Okay, I, I love it. I love it. So. Uh, Willow, I know that you and your husband are big Voltron fans, and you will be... He is more so than me, but yes. <laughs> well, you will be happy to know that Voltron made the list of essential cartoons that we will be covering oh. through the Saturday Morning 101 series. Okay. We've, we've got enough content. We've got <laughs> enough topics to, to uh, carry us through the next two seasons. And I'm already planning the third season, uh, Saturday morning, 102, where we're going to be talking about the spinoffs of the original series and the improvements that they make. So, like, okay. during this series, we'll talk about the X-Men in 1997 uh, or 1990. What was it? Four, three, six, 90, and then, yeah. yeah. 94, 95, yeah. And, and then we'll be talking about, in the second series, the superior X-Men series, uh, X-Men Evolutions and X-Men and the X-Men. But I just, that was a hot take for some people in our audience. <laughs> Drew Meldon is losing yeah. his mind. But um, that's... Well, we, we kind of have to touch on, if we're uh, touching on the X-Men uh, cartoons, we kind of have to uh, touch on the, like, the one that predated the X-Men animated series, but I had, the like... <laughs> Wolverine talking in an Australian, Australian accent for whatever accent, reason. Yeah. Yeah, that, never, <laughs> that never aired on TV. It was only VHS. Uh, I, but they made a, a video game out of it, like an arcade game. That was what the, the, the Konami uh, uh, X-Men arcade game was well, based now, Wait a minute, it, Javier. It aired on TV in Canton, Ohio. That's how I oh, saw I, it. I time. never watched it. I never saw it on because on, uh, when that mo cartoon was coming out... Um, it never aired in any syndication in New York. 
Oh, um, and so weird. I was never able to find it. I was never able to find, but uh, I did find it in the video store um, because and I'm like, it was the same thing with the Incredible Hulk. Um, not the, the, there was another Incredible Hulk one uh, that was out there that only came to video. And it was Stan Lee used to, the, used to do like the, the intro. Yeah, no, the that, episode. That, that was but aired. I, I was like, where did this X Men come from? Because it had the the red and um, the the orange and the b- brown outfit that he would wear, and I'm like, right. wait a minute, that's I'm like I've never seen this. Where did this well, come that, from? Well, that that Incredible Hulk series did air on NBC. It yeah, I followed... got it on uh, Amazon. They they you can buy it on yeah, digital. But it followed uh, Spider Man <clears throat> and his amazing friends, and they actually had a soft pilot on Spider Man and his amazing friends in the final season of that show. That's coming up during this series, too. So we've got a lot that we're going to be talking about over the next uh, several weeks, months, years. There's a lot <laughs> of material. I'm you can, I'm kind of excited about this. Can you tell, Willow? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm looking forward to geeking out with you guys more about this. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So before we leave this morning, uh, Javier, tell us more about your YouTube channel. You have some toys that I asked you to show off. So... Your YouTube channel, J and J Toy Giants. You and your son are doing unboxings, toy hunts, reviews, and you brought your Holy Grail items for us this morning. Yeah, because um, uh, when I started collecting, there was I, I started looking and diving in to some of the stuff that I used to collect as a kid. But then I saw some stuff that came out well well after I stopped collecting. That I'm like, oh man, I need to have that. Um, and I just wrote quick just how it started. Uh, and I'll, <clears throat> I get kind of emotional when I talk tell this story, so I'll make it brief. Um, so in 2019, uh, my, my son was six. Um, he and I didn't really have the best of relationship because I tried to like when, when he was going to be born, I'm like, oh, we're going to do this. And I'm going to show him all my cartoons and all of this stuff that I grew up in. And it's going to be a you know grand old time. That wasn't the case. We were like night and day. He loved. He liked stuff that I wasn't into, and he didn't really understand the stuff that I was into. So we butted heads a lot, and I was like really, I was really afraid that I wasn't going to have that bond with him that I really wanted. So one day after work, I we went. We had to go to Target for something, and you know, you know, he was he was being he did really well in his uh, school. So I said, I'll give him a toy. So I say, hey, buddy, we'll, we'll get a toy at uh, Target. And I, I decided to film it and film. That was our very first toy hunt. And we went, went through and he was he actually got uh, the uh, Barbie from Toy Story 4. Oh. And then when we went home, I said, you know, it'd be nice to do it like an unboxing. Like I'll film him unboxing it and we'll talk about it. And then that night it clicked. I was like. Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh, Javier froze. But I love this story. I, I love this idea of you know finding this common bond between father and son. Hopefully he can come back. Um, he has a, a couple of action figures that uh, he wanted to show off. But do go and find J and J Toy Giants on YouTube. I'm a subscriber. Everyone watching, subscribe to that channel and watch their weekly unboxings and toy hunts. It's a lot of fun. Um, And if you're into trade paperbacks, graphic novels, check out instocktrades.com and um, tell them Johnny and back of the cereal box sent you. Yeah, we lost Javier completely. He's, he's gone internet troubles in the Bronx. So uh, thank you for being with us, Javier. Um, Willow? Yes, sir. What's what's next for Cryptid Crunch? Do you have a topic yet? Um, okay, so tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna be teaming up with uh, the ice cream queens for after dark uh, for an after dark episode. Okay. Uh we're actually gonna be t- uh, talking about uh uh oh my god, brain. <laughs> Adulting is hard. <laughs> I had it just a moment ago. Um, so yeah, there was a unusual story of a woman who faked a poltergeist. Faked Um, it? Yeah. 
and okay so the the columbia uh, the club oh my god words the columbus poltergeist uh event uh her name was tina resch and uh so yeah please join us tomorrow as we explore the whole situation of the poltergeist event and to the current events of her uh being in jail for the murder of her child what was this columbus yeah. ohio yes how have i never heard of this i grew up in akron <laughs> ohio not far from there I've never i will I'll send you the link to uh, the story, uh, the Wikipedia page, and yeah, it's it's an interesting story. It's uh, I was inspired by a fellow uh, who uh, basically took it took the story and tried to recreate some of the events. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting story. <laughs> I'm I'm intrigued. I, I I'm going to tune in. I might even jump in. Oh, please. Um, that would be awesome. Hey, oh. Javier is back. Hey, Javier, we lost you for a hey. minute. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, but all of a sudden, like, uh, my internet just went down. So I just uh, went back on my phone because I could still yeah. use cellular data. But listen, that happened to me, the host, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It was, that was a wild episode. So go ahead and show us all the, uh, the toys that you uh, hauled out for new loot this week. Okay. Um, we love that story about <clears throat> using the YouTube channel to, you know, bridge the gap between father and son. It's an awesome story. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. No, yeah, definitely. And um, so uh, this is kind of like my, when I started collecting, because I, I never heard of it. I never saw it. And when Mattel lost the license for the Masters of the Universe, Super 7 picked it up. And Super 7 didn't get uh, permission from Canon or whoever owned Canon for the likeness of Dolph Lundgren. And the William Stout collection was based off the drawings of the 1987 um, film that Dolph Lundgren did for Masters of the Universe. So this is his, his, um, his figure. And it comes with, uh, you know, the sort of gray skull, his cape, has his blaster. You can see here, uh, it even has his like little, um, he has like a little pocket for like a knife here. Yeah. Oh, man. it's, that's, a, it's that a beautiful. And, uh, so that's really cool. And did they also, yeah, they're actually re-releasing it. It's coming out. Um, they did a Skeletor and a God Skeletor. They also did uh Starod and Carger. Uh, those it are is. actually a lot less expensive, but the Skeletor, they have regular Skeletor and God Skeletor when he gets all in that uh, gold, uh, all over all over his like uh, uniform. Yeah, uh, and so there's all two of versions those, of that. All of those are available from our sponsor, Entertainment Earth. You can pre-order them. Uh, click the link in our show notes. What was the other two that you uh, had? All right, so this uh, is the Icon Heroes Karate Kid Daniel LaRusso. Mm. And I'm actually trying to get the original Karate Kid figure from Remco, which was uh, done back in the 80s. And you can see uh, on its back here the Miyagi-Do Karate uh, logo. I also have the Johnny Lawrence as well. I do have a NECA um, Miyagi and a NECA Johnny Lawrence in the uh, Skeletor, Skeletor, or I'm sorry, Skeleton uh, Halloween costume. I'm actually trying to get the uh, one for the tournament because it comes with the tournament uh, play set and then uh, Johnny and Daniel in their gi. Um, and then I have these are all re-releases, but the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Cool. So the so those are the yeah, those playmates. are the three that like I had to have. Yeah, I love that. I love it. Playmates has reissued that original line and um, available on stores again. Uh, everything old is new again. And right now we are in a wave of nostalgia marketing. I, I'm sure, Willow, you saw the article we posted a couple of weeks ago that 43%, 43% of the retail toy market are adults buying toys for themselves. Yep. 43 
percent. That's huge. Because we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to collect our childhood we're, because we're, we've either lost our uh, our toys from moving around too much, or <laughs> you know, just well. That, we just and want that's to this, reconnect with our childhood. That's right. And that's what this whole show is about. Celebrating the fun of the Saturdays of our youth while surviving adulthood today. And for me, I survive adulthood today by buying toys. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, awesome. I, I love I love uh, toy collecting. It's been a hobby of mine since then. And, um, you know, he, he Jaden um, collects. He He's on this big lego kick right now like he's got this huge three tables it's like three full tables that we kind of put together and he's slowly but surely building his own lego city That's he's got wow. like a farm yeah. he's got like a beach you know and if um we glued some uh lego mats you know where you can just put it on top of that and just start your own city or building and he's adding to it. he's actually out right now with uh his nana and his sister and his mom um so going to walmart because he wanted to get some more lego minifigures um so he's into that he also loves funkos he loves um uh is it the squishimals or the squishimals squishmallows yeah squishmallows yeah he's into that um but he has a lot of toys too he's collected a, a lot of like the uh scooby-doo figures that were b back in 2019 um those were one of the first uh, unboxings that we did um and of course he likes to stream on twitch along with me uh, that's something that we started doing recently that that's so fantastic check out their channel j and j toy giants now before we leave i've got to share this i just got an email message on facebook messenger willow from a friend who's watching she says media reports that people in Dubai wouldn't understand the humor in the Flintstones, but I know for a fact in up uh, the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> Abu Dhabi do. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. All right. So we've got to get out of here. We're almost, uh, this show gets longer and longer and I try to <laughs> keep it tighter and tighter. The more I try to tighten the show up, the longer it goes. What is that all about? Maybe, maybe, one one morning, Willow, we're we just... will have to do a two hour special one of these days. I guess. Well, well, I think I think one morning I'm just we're not going to have any topic. And we're going <laughs> to see what happens. Anyway, um, keep the comments coming. If you know, keep posting comments on the feed on our Facebook page. Make sure you like and share this video with two, three hundred of your closest friends and family. And the most important thing you can do is support us. And you can support us by commenting, sharing, liking, subscribing. Those things cost you no money. But if you really want to invest in the back of the cereal box journey, and we've got big plans for 2023 and 2024, consider being a sponsor at buymeacoffee.com slash cereal box pod. We've got some great super friends that are already contributing on a monthly basis. Um, we've uh, shared them with you prior. And um, Dave Mattingly, Dave Maginelli, Greg and Crystal Jones, Sharice Collins, Eli Cash. And you too can help us out. If you love our show, contribute at buymeacoffee.cerealboxpod. Buy us a bowl of cereal, two, three. Buy us a whole box of cereal. And if you hate our show, contribute even more generously. That way we can improve it just for you. And Willow, we've already talked about Cryptid Crunch or After Dark coming up tomorrow night. Um, people can find you anywhere on the internet. All over social media. Just by doing a search for Willow Skyler at Willow Skyler, you're going to find the Peppermint Princess, the social media socialite, your emotional support Canadian. And of course, find Javier at J and J Toy Giants on YouTube. And if you want to follow me, it's right here in the backdrop, cerealboxpodcast.com. Check us out. And um, we love you guys for joining us. And until the next time, love you, mean it. We'll catch you on the back of the cereal box.